my name is Lexi, and today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Hi friends, and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to see you here. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm very excited to do this tag. I feel like this is a bunch of people's favorite tags to do in the booktube community just because it's like a really fun way to reflect on everything that you've been reading so far. I'm gonna try to link the original tag. However, I feel like that video has been removed because every time I click on the original creator's link, it says that the video doesn't exist anymore. But I'll see if I can locate it and if I can, I will put it in the description. Can you hear my dog? <laughs> question number one, what is the best book you've read so far this year? And no question asked, this was not hard at all, my favorite book of the year was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is like one of my favorite books of all time now. I think it's incredible and I highly recommend it to everyone. So this is an adult fantasy and it is literally my perfect story. I think it's so incredible. This follows Linus and Linus is a social worker and Linus works specifically with children. His job is to go and check out orphanages that have magical children to make sure that the children are safe and happy and that the orphanage has like good conditions to live in for kids. He gets sent on this top secret mission to go out and check an orphanage in the middle of this cerulean sea on an island run by a man named Arthur Parnassus. And he is sent there because the people, I guess, of this organization believe that the children in this orphanage might possibly bring on the destruction of the world. And so he has to learn all about these children and their magical abilities, and he has to make sure that the orphanage is safe. I love this book so much. It is so charming. It actually reads a little bit like a middle grade, even though it is an adult fantasy. It's just the most charming and whimsical book in the entire world. It's a five out of five stars, obviously. Like, it's completely perfect. I would pick this up if you love reading about magical children, if you love the found family trope. There is a little bit of a romance in here as well, and it is LGBTQ+. I won't say, like, who it's between or anything like that. It's a very light, small element of this book, but it was just enough to, like, make my heart completely flutter every single time as well. And I just, I really adore this book. I really think everyone needs to read this book. This is the best book in the entire world. It's so good. <laughs> Question number two is the best sequel that you have read this year. And for me, the best one is Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. So this follows two characters that were introduced in the very first book, which is Every Hearted Doorway. So I can't really get too much into this because I don't want to spoil anything. This series follows children who went into other worlds and then came back. And we are just following two characters who go back to their like respective wonderland, if you will. I think it's called the Moors where they are and we get to see all of their world and it's really fantastic, kind of dark, LGBTQ plus as well and just a really great Really awesome cast of characters. Shauna McGuire is just brilliant and I love everything that she does. Question number three, what is a new release this year that you want to get to? And for me, that is going to be The Guest List by Lucy Folly. I have heard mixed things about this book, but mostly I've heard that this is a really good story, so I am still really, really excited to pick this up. This is about a group of friends who all go to an island for their friend's wedding and one of them ends up dead. And it turns out that every single one of these people has a motive as to of who killed this person. And so you as the reader is trying to figure out like who killed who and why. It just sounds really cool. I love that it's gonna be on an island. I love that it's like a destination wedding kind of thing. I love the friendship aspect of this. I especially love that there's gonna be like darkness and secrets revealed and things. It really sounds right up my alley and I'm very excited to pick this up. Question number four is a new book release for the second half of the year that you are dying to read. And I have three. <laughs> the first one I think is called Holly Pox and this is by Jessica Townsend. And this is the third installment in the Morgan Crow Trials for the Nevermore series. And I absolutely love Nevermore so much. It's this incredible middle grade. It follows Morgan Crow, who was cursed to die on her 11th birthday, but she is rescued by a man named Jupiter North who 
swoops in, takes her away, and enters her into these magical trials to see if she can get into something called the Wondrous Society. And this is just the continuation of Morgan's journey, and I am obsessed with this world. I adore all of the characters. The next book that I'm really excited to read is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and this, of course, is by Victoria Schwab. This is going to be a dark, I think, adult fantasy, but I've also heard that it's very genre bending. I don't know a ton about it, except that it's going to give off the Time Traveler's Wife vibes, which was one of my very favorite books, and that it is by Victoria Schwab. Like, I love her, so I'll read anything by her. And then the last one I really, really want to read is by Naomi Novik, and it is called A Deadly Education. And the only thing that I know about this particular book is that it is supposed to be like an adult Hogwarts, meaning it's supposed to be like, I think a college to teach magic or something like that. And that just sounds amazing. I am huge into dark academia. I am huge into that whole fantasy genre. I really trust Naomi Novik. Spinning Silver by her was so incredibly magical and brilliant. So I really can't wait for this book as well. Question number five was your biggest disappointment of the year. And for sure, unfortunately, that is going to have to be a cosmology of monsters. And this is by Sean Hamill. This actually was in my most anticipated books that I wanted to read in 2020. I think I put like, there was a video out that I made that was like 20 books that I wanna read in 2020. This actually came out in 2019. So first of all, Sean Hamill is an amazing writer because I read this entire thing in the span of one sitting. So like the writing is not a problem. And also the plot is incredibly interesting, like the story itself. This is about a boy whose family is essentially touched by monsters. So they all see monsters in different ways and monsters plague the family in different ways. It makes some of them kind of crazy. It makes others incredibly afraid. And then this boy um, embraces the monster. So he befriends the monsters and lets the monsters in. I absolutely loved that premise. I, I felt like it was really brilliant and I really, really loved the story most of the time. But there was an element in the story that I felt really uncomfortable with so much to the point where I just didn't want to continue reading it anymore. If you don't want to know what that element is, please feel free to like mute me. I'll put spoilers right here and as soon as I'm done, like you can you can unmute me, so I'll put spoilers now. But the element that I didn't particularly like very much was that this monster befriended this little boy and um, was there for him, I think ever since he was like three years old. And this monster got him toys, protected him, loved him, was his best friend. And then when he was around 15, the monster and him like started a sexual relationship. And I really was uncomfortable with that for so many reasons, the biggest being that apparently the monster is a woman. And I really felt, A, that's statutory rape. Like you can't have sex or do anything with a minor if you are a woman, like a full grown woman and he is 15 years old. But like second of all, that is, that is child grooming. Like giving like a child something and like comforting them and all that other stuff until they're like 15 and then you like have, no, that's just, I really hated that element to the point where like I really did not like the book. Which is a big bummer because I feel like this had a lot of potential. But I do think that he has a great imagination and he's a brilliant writer so I wanna read more of his stuff. Um, but yeah, this was, this wasn't it. Okay, question number six is biggest surprise this year. And I think that it's supposed to be like biggest surprise for a book, but I'm gonna go ahead and twist this question a little bit and say that the biggest surprise this year was a genre. And that is that I apparently really love thrillers now, which is shocking to me because I am the biggest chicken. <laughs> so I read Turn of the Key with my friends this year by Ruth Ware and it was incredible. And I loved it so very much. I read this with Ali and Kaylin, we are doing like a little bit of a low key buddy read all year long for like thrillers and it's been really, really fun. So this was the first one that we read and I loved it. The ending, I'm still not totally sure on how I feel about the ending, but I ended up giving this book a 4.5 star. I thought it was really great. And then this one by Riley Sager was a five out of five star. I mean, it was just completely brilliant. And if you are looking for a thriller recommendation, either of the two books would be great, but I would also highly recommend this. This was a five out of five star and 
I love thrillers. I can't believe I'm saying this. I love thrillers. I love thrillers so much. So that's definitely been the biggest surprise this year. <laughs> Question at number seven is favorite new author, and I have two. The first is going to be Anna Marie McLemore. So I read Wild Beauty for the very first time this year and was completely blown away by the language, by the imagery, by the magical realism. Like, this is a masterpiece in my opinion opinion. This particular book is all about these cousins who live on this ground and they have this magical ability to make flowers grow. There's also a curse that says that any man that these women fall in love with will die. And so we're trying to figure out exactly how that works. But really what Anna Marie McLemore does the best is that their writing style is unbelievably gorgeous. Like I personally fell in love more with their writing style than the story itself. The story was brilliant, but the writing style was just like a 10 out of 10. And this is the first book that I've read of theirs and I want to read many more. So I've actually ordered quite a few more and I have three on my shelves that I'm going to get to. So this is my very first pick for favorite new discovered author. But I was also thinking about it and I feel like A.S. King is also somebody who I'm gonna put in this category because I read Dig and I really loved Dig. I gave this actually a four out of five star. I thought that the surrealism in this book particularly was the best surrealism I've ever read in my entire life. And I thought that the way A.S. King kind of tied together the entire plot was brilliant. And I wanted to read more because I, I just wanted to see more about her particular style. So I ended up also reading Still Life with a Tornado, which is a five out of five star. Then I read Ask the Passenger, which surprisingly I didn't particularly like as much as the other ones, but was still interesting. And then I Crawl Through It, which the surrealism in this is just so incredibly interesting and entertaining. So if you like experimental writing, I highly recommend this as well. So yes, I would say Anna Marie McLemore and A.S. King for sure. <laughs> Question number eight, your new fictional crush. And that one without a doubt is going to be Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. I'm reading this book with Kaylin for our book club, A Touch of Whimsy. And right now I'm about halfway through and I just really adore Howl. <laughs> There's just something about that character both in the movie and in the book that really attracts me he's just he's he's just he's the one you know what i'm saying he's the one this particular book is about a girl named sophie who is a hat maker and she is put under a curse by a witch who turns her essentially into an old woman and she runs into Howl's Moving Castle, which is owned by this very mysterious wizard named Howl. It's just about their journeys together and it's really charming and whimsical. It's, it's such a beautiful read and I'm really enjoying the entire thing so far. So yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, it would be Howl. Question number nine, favorite fictional character. And for that, it's going to be a two-way tie between Roger and Dodger. So yes, I read Sean McGuire's Middle Game this year. This was my very first book that I read. I wanted to start the year off with a book that I thought I would love. And this is like a five out of five star book for me. I think it is brilliant. Uh, the plot has completely stuck with me. And it's one of those books where you read it and you just think the entire time that the writing is so impeccable that you don't wanna put it down. Sean McGuire really does so many interesting things within this particular book that blew my mind and really were fantastic. Okay, I'm sorry, but on to Dodger and Roger. Dodger and Roger are these two twins and they are opposites. So Dodger is somebody who is very analytical. She is incredible with math and numbers and statistics, and she's a little bit of a genius in that regards. And then her twin brother, Roger, has a gift with language and with reading and with words, essentially, and they really balance each other out. This book is about their journey. Their father essentially made them, and he is trying to create them to be gods, and we follow whatever that means, and we follow how they love each other and how they really care about each other and they just their like sibling love is so incredibly pure that it makes your heart ache and you just want them to be happy like I genuinely love these characters with all of my heart and I loved this book 
Question number 10, a book that made you cry. I have two here. No one is surprised. The first one I wanna talk about is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This was incredible. This was so incredible. I had heard some mixed things from people going into this book and I don't really know why because I thought it was impeccable in every single way. This is a very difficult book to read because the subject matter is suicide and so you have to be really careful with yourself it is sad. It made me so incredibly sad. I was crying throughout the entire book. I tabbed up a lot of it because there were some passages that were so heart achingly beautiful that I just was sobbing, but like uncontrollably. So this follows a girl, her mother commits suicide and she becomes convinced that her mother has become a bird. There is a lot, a lot of magical realism in this book. It is very heavy on the magical realism and it was done phenomenally. So Lee ends up going to Taiwan to see her grandparents who do not speak any English. And while she is there, she's trying to connect to her mother and find her mother in this bird form. Everything that happens in this book is just fantastic. It's it's really phenomenal and it's really, really beautiful and it explores so many amazing themes of grief and sadness, healing, first love, really everything. I thought it was just really done quite beautifully in my opinion. And then the second book that made me sob uncontrollably was My Dark Vanessa and this is by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is about a girl who I think is in her late 20s and she begins reflecting on her very first relationship which was with her teacher when she was 15 years old and her teacher was much older than her. And what she remembers as a very romanticized version of their relationship, when she starts to really delve into it, she thinks maybe was more manipulative on his part and maybe was not so romantic. And so this is an exploration of what really happened. And we see two perspectives as we go through this. We see, things uh, through the 15 year old's eyes who is really in love. And then we see the same perspective all of a sudden from our own eyes where we realize just how gross and disgusting this is and how this man is taking advantage of this little girl. This book will make you feel things. This book will make you angry. This book will help you to re-examine society and how society really prizes youth, but like in a really gross way. And I, I think it really sheds light on a lot of things that, I don't know, I think maybe seem glamorous on the surface. And then when you delve into it, you're like, wow, that's really troublesome. And I just, I felt like this was an important read and it was also a very difficult read to get through. It's difficult for so many reasons. I think a huge reason is because you want to protect the protagonist, but the protagonist is also very unlikable at times because she says things where you're just like, that's unforgivable, you're a bad person. But at the same time, it's not her fault because she has gone through so much stuff and she doesn't understand like how to deal with things. So I just, I thought this was really good. I thought that this was brilliant and it's definitely a book that you'll be able to read in a single setting because it was just, it was great. It was well written. Question number 11, a book that made you happy. So for a book that made me happy, I chose The House with Chicken Legs and this is by Sophie Anderson. This was such a fantastic middle grade. I absolutely loved this and Sophie Anderson has become a new favorite author for sure. If you are interested in whimsical, beautiful things, I highly, highly recommend this book and Sophie Anderson as an author just in general. This is about Marinka and Marinka lives with her grandmother grandmother who is Baba Yaga and they live in the house with chicken legs. This house moves all over and her grandmother helps people pass to the other side after they pass away. Marinka does not want to become the next Baba Yaga, but Baba Yaga has decided that that's what's going to happen. And it is about Marinka's dynamics and relationship with her grandmother, with trying to figure out what she wants in life, with finding friends. It's magical, it's heartfelt, it will make you emotional and sad, but it's also such a charming and happy story. And I really, really loved it. I, I can't recommend it enough. I think it was just, just amazing. Question number 12, the most beautiful book that you have read this year. And th this one is one that I'm still currently reading, but it is Howl's Moving Castle, but it's this really, 
really smart edition of Howl's Moving Castle. Um, Kaylin and I actually purchased this to give away for our book club, but we also purchased one for ourselves because we were obsessed with the cover. This is by the Folio Society and everything about it is just incredible. It has these beautiful illustrations throughout it. It has a beautiful um, hardcover slip case. I just think it's really fantastic and I'm a huge fan. So definitely Howl's Moving Castle for sure. And then the final question is, what book do you need to read by the end of the year? I really wanna read the Raven series. I think it's called the Raven Cycle series. So this is the first one, The Raven Boys. I technically listened to this two years ago on audio, but I didn't like the narrator very much. And so I didn't connect to the first book, I think as much as I could have connected to it because of that. So I wanna read this entire series, but I wanna read the physical copies myself, not listening to anything. I think it's a series that I'm really gonna love. I just, I haven't technically, you know, picked them up yet. And there you have it. Those are all the books for the mid-year freakout tag. I have read a lot this year so far. Well, for me, I've read a lot of really, really great books and it's actually been a pretty good year for reading despite it being a pretty bad year just in general. I think we can all agree if the murder hornets didn't like nail that nail in the coffin, I don't know what did. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. I love you all so very much and I will see you again very soon with a new video. Until next time you guys, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book and I will talk to you later. Bye. You know an offense, so tell me what are we? You know that I hate this game. You apologize, always say that you're sorry But why does it feel the same? Mm -hmm. I used to keep my cool, 